So what to do if you're teaching English in Japan and uh, teaching a, an adult class, say a business English class, and the class um, become disengaged, you, you might get passive aggression. It's generally not wanting to cooperate or, you know, do the lesson. Um, I'll explain in another video that uh, commonly um, adult classes, if companies are providing the class or, you know, booking you as a teacher or booking your company to send you as a teacher and paying, they will commonly, they might have the English class, they set it for the student's lunch hour, the employee, their employee's lunch hour, so they've got to study English during their lunch hour, sort of gobble down their lunch and then run to the classroom. Or, as I said in the other video again, it, they call it self-development period, i.e. unpaid overtime when they're meant to finish work. They've got to stay on. I used to do a two-hour class, one hour was paid for the students, it was four to six, they worked eight till five. They had to do uh, uh, four to five, obviously they were paid, and then you know, five to six was um, self-development period. Uh, now what I found students, generally the easiest way of dealing with, if you get one or two students, um, the others who are get difficult, the others may, and by the way, before I say anything, can I preface this, I don't mean any disrespect to the Japanese students, or I'm not belittling them in any way, I'm just saying there are certain cultural traits that will assist you if you know how to sort of play the game as it were, yeah, um, so I'm not sort of belitt I said belittling them or anything, but anyway, that aside, here goes, if you get one or two students who start acting up, you may find that the others will gently chide them, usually in Japanese, and sort of the group thing takes over and they'll sort of bite, they'll, you know, bite it back, if that's the expression I want, and uh, sort of calm down and, and, and do the work. I've had that. So you may not need to, may not need to sort of do anything. Um, getting angry or irritable back is just a highway to nowhere. It's not going to work. It's going to make the situation 10 times worse. I know it's easier said than done because, you know, you may be tired and pissed off as well, you know, but, you know, a lot of the time foreigners aren't considered to have sort of emotions. <laughs> We're supposed to sort of stand there going, yeah, you know, but we get, you know, we get tired and pissed off or we feel fluey or we have bad stomachs or, you know, crap days, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, all that aside, I've, uh, I knew one who taught at uh, Nagasaki University, an English teacher, and, uh, she lost her job. She just went ape, ape, one day at the class. And these are students, you know, university students, kids really, or very young adults. She just went mad at the class and she blew up at them. And I actually know I think she quit. She had some sort of, she was basically having a bit of a nervous breakdown because the class acting up, you know, which is pretty bad really. Shouldn't have to deal with all that, especially at university level. Anyway, that aside, so back to adult class. Adult class. So yeah, one or two start acting up. You may you may be able to rely on the class to sort of the group the group think thing to take over, and they get put back on the straight and narrow. If the whole class starts acting up, what I would do, I don't teach the moment, but I've had extensive experience of it before, so I do speak with some experience. What I would do is start going to, come on guys, let's hang in there. I know it's difficult. I know you've had a long day. Really sympathise them, uh, you know, just so long as you don't sound like you're, you're overdoing it. Um, you know, come on guys, let's try and hang on in there. Um, and that, I found, tended to sort of work. You know, you appeal to the sort of the gambale spirit, that let's try, let's do it hard. Um... One thing I find, one thing that sort of, if you can get away with the sort of tailing your own course, devising your own courses, which I could, mine weren't supervised. I was just sent to this major, major company, starts with an M, and uh, I mean, I was given textbook stuff to teach from. But what I found very quickly, these companies, I mean, I, I changed the structure of the lesson, because a lot of the time you're told to like, you know, you're told to get students up, to do role play or they've got to do things individually and stuff. And a lot of students, not unreasonably, do not want to do it. They may be shy, they may be not happy to talk conversing in English. Um, and I found it quite disrespectful to, you know, just sort of push the students into doing that sort of thing. What I found much better is to give them group stuff they can work together as a group or, you know, divide the class into two or three groups. So I, I would, even if the lesson syllabus sort of 
requested it or demanded it, instructed it. I would not, unless I knew the students and they'd be happy with it. And a few, you had a few outgoing ones, but generally I'd get them doing group stuff and just work together. And if you get to the end, they take turns. To, say you get them to do a presentation and everyone has to talk a bit, then you've got them talking. You've got them talking in English, which is, you know, job done. Um, and that would quite often, there'd be quite a nice little hub of activity of guys working in, an, in a group. They were happy doing that. It was a bit of a wind down for them. Like if they've had a long day or something, they can sort of just, you know, work. And one thing, that's a mosquito land on my hand. One thing I, I didn't do is worth and get away with it. I'm not totally hard ass about this. No talking in Japanese at all. It's, you know, I think they were in Japan. I mean, I get it, but if I heard a student sort of muttering in Japanese, you know, I'd let it go. I, time and then other times I might just every now and then I might stuck in it. I might stick in a, uh, let's try and keep the conversation in English if we can, guys, but just really sort of respectful. You know, if we can. You know, don't start telling people in their own country what language they can and can't speak, even in an English lesson, you know. We're still we're still the guest here, you know, and there's uh, there's history here about, you know, the, the foreigners barging into Japan, so I'll just try and keep certain sensitivities in mind, as it were. If that doesn't sound a bit OTT, but even if it does, that's I think that's the truth of the matter. You know, we are guests here. So just... So just try you know, a bit of respect, a bit of courtesy, a bit of sort of, say, kuki or yomu, say in Japanese, reading the air, sort of reading the signals, yeah. But just don't blunder in there, think, you know, getting students up and trying to make them sing or something and all this crap that some students push, you know, not 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 good. Anyway, such is my uh, bit of uh, uh, advice or opinions. There. So I had, I had some experience and it worked with me, so, and it can be a bit of a minefield out there, so good luck.